In today's video, we're going to talk about three different methods to reverse a string in JavaScript. Whether you're preparing for a coding interview or just looking to improve your skills, these techniques will definitely come in handy. All right, let's start with the first method, which is probably the simplest and most straightforward. We're going to use a combination of JavaScript's built-in methods to reverse a string. Here's what our function looks like. Here we have a method called reverse string. When we call this function, we pass a string to it. The function then works to reverse that string and gives us the reversed version as the output. First, we take the input string and use the split method. This splits the string into an array of individual characters. So, if we start with hello, split turns it into H-E-L-L-O. Next, we use the reverse method. This reverses the order of elements in the array. So now we have O, L, L, E, and H. Finally, we use the join method to combine the array elements back into a single string. The result is OLEA, which is the reversed version of our original string. And that's it. This method is super simple and gets the job done in just one line of code. Now let's move on to the second method, which involves using a for loop. This approach is great if you want to avoid using built-in methods or if you just prefer using loops. Here's how you can do it. This function takes a string as input and returns the reversed version of that string. Now let's break it down step by step. Here, we're creating a new variable called reversed and setting it to an empty string. We'll use this variable to build our reversed string one character at a time. Next, we have this for loop. Let me explain how this loop works. We start by setting it to str.length. One, this means I will initially be the index of the last character in the string. For example, if our string is hello, star.length one will be four because hello has five characters and indexes are zero based. The loop will keep running as long as I is greater than or equal to zero. When I becomes less than zero, the loop stops. This condition ensures that we go through each character in the string from the last one to the first one. After each loop iteration, I is decreased by one. This moves us from the current character to the previous one in the string. Inside the loop, we add the character at the current index I to the reverse string. By the time the loop finishes, reversed will contain all the characters from the original string, but in reverse order. After the loop, we have this line. This line simply returns the reverse string, which now contains the original string in reverse order. This method is a bit longer, but it's also pretty easy to understand. Finally, let's take a look at the third method, which uses recursion. This one is a bit more advanced, but it's a good example of how you can solve problems in different ways. When we call reverse string, the function starts with the string hello. First, it checks if the string is empty using the if statement. Since the string is not empty, it skips the if block and goes to the else part. Here it makes a recursive call. Reverse string with the input str.substr of one. This method substr of one removes the first character, which is the letter h from the string hello, leaving us with the string hello. The function is now waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input LO before it can finish. Now the function is working with the string LO. Again, it checks if the string is empty. It's not, so it makes another recursive call. Reverse string with the input str.substr of one. This time, substr of one removes the first character, which is the letter E from the string LO, leaving LO. The function is now waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input lalo. Next, the function is called with the string lalo. As before, it checks if the string is empty. It's not, so it makes another recursive call. Reverse string with the input str.substr of one. Here, substr of one removes the first character, which is the letter L, from the string lo, leaving lo. The function is now waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input low. Now the function is working with the string low. It checks if the string is empty. It's not. So it makes another recursive call. 
reverse string with the input str.substr of 1. Substor of 1 removes the first character, which is the letter L, from the string low, leaving O. The function is now waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input O. Next, the function is called with the string O. Again, it checks if the string is empty. It's not, so it makes another recursive call. Reverse string with the input str.substr of 1. Here, substr of 1 removes the first character, which is the letter O, from the string O, leaving an empty string. The function is now waiting for the result of calling reverse string with an empty string. Finally, the function is called with an empty string. This time, the if statement is true because the string is empty. So the function returns an empty string, which triggers the end of the recursion. Now that we've reached the base case, the recursive calls start to return values back up the call stack. The fifth call was waiting for the result of calling reverse string with an empty string, which we now know is an empty string. So it returns an empty string plus the letter O, which is just O. The fourth call was waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input O, which is now O. So it returns O plus the letter L, which gives us OL. The third call was waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input low, which is now OL. So it returns OL plus the letter L, which gives us O. The second call was waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input L on low, which is now all. So it returns all plus the letter E, which gives us all. Finally, the first call was waiting for the result of calling reverse string with the input LO, which is now OLA. So it returns OLA plus the letter H, which gives us OLA, and that's it. The function returns OLA as the reversed string, which is exactly what we wanted. I hope this explanation helped you understand how the reverse string function works. If you found it useful, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more coding tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.